The Daily Cannon uh, is going up, man. Uh, I got somebody in the building I've known for many moons, man. Uh, uh, a real one, a certified one who I, I watched uh, put a whole city on his back mm. uh, and, and did it independently. Uh, there, there wasn't a time when in New York radio where it wasn't a remix or an original joint that this brother wasn't bodying and i always asked him how did he make those moves so we're gonna get into that because he has quite the story to tell uh the one and only troy av yeah thank you thank you it was good to be here thank you for having me yo yeah we've done this so many times before on this coast uh other coasts i mean obviously Mm -hmm. uh first of all i gotta ask like what what you doing out here on 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 the west coast in la i mean you know on west it baby (laughs) no i I, um i had just dropped a project called dead hate i won so i had to go do you know all the different runs and then i of course i gotta stop by and tap in with my boy whenever i come through the city you feel me yeah no i appreciate you obviously you know i you know i I still got got the spot out and then why too so i was i thought we probably Chop it up out there, but it's good to see Nigga you. He had out. a big ass Scrooge McDuck. Oh, I can't cuss. Yeah, 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 you cuss. Uh, it's oh, real shit. He had a big ass Scrooge McDuck office on some top floor. You go with the elevator. Yeah. You walk in the back, all kind of. Over there at Viacom yeah, and, I and see Times it, Square. We was lit, Troy. That shit was motivation, you heard? Nah, that's what's up. I started to get an office. When, after I saw that, I went to get an office down by whatever the place downtown where the bull is at. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm down there on Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, whatever it was, it was like. 75,000 a year yeah. and then I'm like all right fuck it let me get it I knew I wasn't gonna be there it was just a flex you yeah because yeah, I mean? yeah. like you know you get exposed to different shit yeah and you'd be like oh this is how we supposed to do it yeah I seen your Scrooge McDuck shit at the top floor I'm like oh I'm gonna get one of these yeah. <laughs> and then I end up going and doing like a um a interview for one of these media outlets I can't remember and they had a fucking apartment yeah. and they had the apartment with the kitchen and everything like three bedrooms on the waterfront, and they was running they shit out of there. So I said, wait a minute, hold on, let me do something like this. Yeah. And then I told my little sister that I was a real estate agent, I said, yo, just find me a condo somewhere that I could buy, because it's 75000 a year, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I could just buy a condo for two fifty. Yeah. and then, so that was my little story, you didn't even know you motivated me, I ended up buying a condo That's and turned it into an office. And then all employees got fired, so now it's just a bachelor pad. Ah, so many, so many ways to flip the finance. We yeah, understand. that's a fact, though. So, I mean, you said you out like, We got to talk about it, man, because even when we chopped it up before, you were like, yo, I, you, we all know you got a story to tell. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, Dear Hater, I won. Uh-huh. I mean, let's talk about this. Right now, you, I mean, you one of those guys that, you know, uh, they either loving you or they hating you. Man. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> like, and, and some, it's people that's been, you know, loud with the hate uh, and you addressing them directly. Uh, but I feel like everybody may or may not know the story, man. I mean, one, it's happened over uh, uh, a length of time. Yeah, that, definitely. That, like, what is, what's the, what's the, like, let's get down to it. What does well, Troy the, Ave the, have to say the about it? The origins of everything, you know, I came up. Um, I'm gonna take. I feel like I'm Hollywooding y'all with my shoes on. <laughs> nah, real. nah. Do do I'm you? Good. Yeah, it's early. I, we understand. Yeah, it's early. Time. You had a long night in L. A. Yeah. But anyway, you know the origins of it is, I I came up as far as like grinding, self-made, self-paid on my own, worked for everything. You know what I'm saying? And um, just like down from when the mixtape ever started, I wanted to get on mixtapes. DJ told me twelve hundred dollars for a mixtape. I'm I'm a teenager. I ain't really had twelve hundred to spend. I might have had three thousand to my name. Right. I told him eat a dick, <laughs> and I went and I made my own mixtape for like nine hundred and started selling them. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I just come from that. If somebody don't want to help you, I I started bubbling for my mixtapes. I wanted to get signed on a label. Labels ain't want to sign me. I said fuck it. I'm gonna start my own label. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So like I just come from if a dog is slammed in your face and you know you. Fucking build your own house and get your own dose. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, fact. Every time life throw me lemons, I make lemonade, then I sell that bitch. You know what <laughs> I mean? At the lemonade stand. Right. So when you come up like that, and um, you know most people don't come up like that. Most people don't aren't willing to work, and you know what I'm saying. So when when you you become successful like that, you have other people who like they build animosity towards you. It's always gonna be somebody with the why him, why not me type of mentality instead of the Damn, that motivates me. Like I just said, I came to your Scrooge McDuck office, and I was like, <laughs> damn, this is dope. You know what I'm saying? I, let me 
that's that's motivating me. So with that, with that, you know, success breeds jealousy and then it was, you know, small pockets of people who had jealousy, but those small pockets of people became to become voiceless as with the emergence of social media and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody had an opinion before, but everybody didn't have a voice with mm. their opinion. Mm. So then it became like one one hater that was real voiceless and became like a stalker and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, so much so to you have court documented facts that this person, we call him Ratstone, uh, he... He tweeted at or uh, to me um, 780 times over a span of five years. Wow. It, which is crazy. And then even in that sense, because, I mean, uh, and, you know, I, obviously on these forums, we got to give give everybody they just do because, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's difficult for somebody like myself who knows all y'all right. <laughs> you know what i mean and it's just like we see like man what what is it really about and if it's like one street business is street business we know that right, right? but then when that street business starts to come into the to the world of social media and Definitely. and entertainment how do you deal with that how do you deal with it with something that was like oh that's just internet cats talking or people on these podcasts and blogs having different opinions to where even in you know both of y'all situation it it actually turns into some some real serious you know stuff to where pe people's lives are affected yeah well i mean you know it with hip hop, I call it like the Shaq effect, where when somebody could file Shaq, when Shaq used to play Lakers at his prom, they'd file him and the referees wouldn't call it. Oh, Shaq's big, Shaq can handle that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't call the same file. So in hip hop, a lot of times when you got somebody, if this was pop music, if this was country music, they would call this person a stalker, a hater. He's like the same type of people that killed John Lennon, that killed Selena. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. uh, like to really. Uh, to really harass somebody like that on every platform, somebody that don't know you. It's not a previous relationship with this person. We never had no fights in the street or sold no drugs and shit went bad or nothing. This is all internet stuff. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Spilling so that's over. what it stemmed from. This was just really just all internet stuff. Really stemmed stuff. from to where this person is on a, on, on a platform saying that when they see me and my people, they're going to shoot shoot us and you know what I'm saying? And right, right. This shit really played out like that. So at that point, you got to be like, damn, is this person really... T and like, what what year was this? Like This, start, this started at, I want to say it all came to a head in 2016. So it had to go on from like 2012 or 2011. I think they said... Wow, so it's going way back. Person, yeah, this is a fact. Wow. It's a fact. So like, you got to think, you can look at anybody's mentions. I don't care if you the... Biggest Michael Jackson fan, they ain't, they ain't tweeting them 780 times. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's a lot. And yo, so y'all never cross paths? Yeah, we not? cross paths. We cross paths on three separate occasions. Okay. Not not the the incident. It was so you three. Well, yeah, the, the three separate occasions prior. Oh, okay. So one was at um, uh, the first one I was at a spot called Brooklyn Bowl. It's like an event thing in, in New York. And um, we had a mutual friend. This is when everything first started. And then the friend said, hey, yo, man, listen. Like, he ran into me at the spot. And then he knew that, you know, uh, Tax Stone, Rat Stone was coming to meet him. So he said, yo, listen, bro. Um, I ain't know you was going to be here, but, you know, I got Tax meeting me. I just want to know, you know, is it okay if he come in or whatever? You know what I'm saying? And I said, well, shit. As long as he come through on some peace shit, tell him come in and holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm never like, a book. I don't, I don't really be wanting no problems. I'm always with getting to the money. Right, right. And I know that violence and shit fucks up the money, but I'ma stand ten toes down. If the problems come, I don't pick and choose. If it's right there in front of me, right. If it's aggression, then I'ma handle that because I need to get home to my kids. You know what I'm saying? I need to make sure I'm safe, my people safe, whatever. So I said, sure, as long as he coming on some peaceful shit, he came in, he apologized for whatever shit he was popping online. I'm like, man, that shit is some, it don't matter to me. It's just like fucked up. Wow, you don't even know me. Like, just leave that shit. Don't. And he like, yeah, yeah, you right. So y'all made peace on the first time. We, we made peace on the first time, and it began again. And um, I think another time I seen him was uh, before this. It was in passing. He was coming out of venue. I was going in a venue. It wasn't no beef there or whatever. I think this might have been after the piece or whatever. And the third time was on a video shoot that I did for Chano. Um, 
I you with all these nicknames. <laughs> these people names be based on real facts. Hey, I got the I got the podcast. It's called the Factor Show. Yeah, all I was about of, to say you be talking your all, shit. All, on, all our on opinions your are based on facts. We don't lie on nobody, even if they on the opposing side or whatever. I never lie on people. You know, I pride myself in that. That's called integrity. Yeah. So anyway, so it was that a video shoot for Chano? And mind you, it's a long story with that video. So I went and did the video for him for free and all that. And um, Ratstone was there, but it like again, it wasn't no issue there. It would be like times he would talk, he would pop shit, then apologize, pop shit, then apologize. It's so cool. It and then the final time I seen him was all at Urban Plaza. You feel me? Right. So they saying that like from January of 2016 to May when it's happened, this uh, person tweeted at me or about me negatively a hundred and thirty something times. I replied to them zero you feel me right. so like i said with the shack syndrome if this was anywhere else this person would be called a stalker a menace you know what i mean but since in hip-hop it's like i'm um, not nah, they they can handle it in street or whatever like it's just not no big deal a hater is a hater anywhere you feel me right and i think a lot of times now it now in this day and age people embrace haters and you feel me and i don't like I think haters should be removed from the community because they're cancerous. They they're like haters should be treated with the same disdain as fucking child molesters, as fucking uh 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 what's the other people that that, that do bullshit, man? I'm like lost the train of thought. This shit this shit really upsets me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. As like as like uh, snitches. If you round with your homies and y'all doing crimes. You should not is don't ever speak on that ever. You signed up for that. You yeah, know what the low frequency of hate so, is really like that's, yeah, that's like the, just like, that's the devil's playground. Come right on, there. bro. And now it seems to be embraced. That is really the devil's playground is being embraced. When as opposed to like I don't have you never see me with a homie that's hating. Like I never have a friend. Just like I wouldn't have a friend that fucking don't pay child support. That's a deadbeat <laughs> right, dad. Right, right, right. Like I'm not cool with that. It's like, man, get the fuck out of here. You a bum. You can't be around. You feel me? Right. But it seemed like now these shit gets embraced. That's why I titled the album Did Hate I Won. Because nobody was really speaking against it. They'd just be like, ah, oh, that person hating. No, it's, no, that person hating and they're cancer and they're dangerous because they spawn other people with hate. And then when that shit comes to a head, anything can happen. So you know what I'm yeah, for real. So even for obviously on our platform and like we we do have a wide demographic. Who, so I feel like the streets and, and, and hip hop specifically knows, you know, what happened between, you know, your your story and the night at Irving Plaza yeah. and and even now how it's resurfaced again because, you know, tax situation, your situation cuz I I just want you to explain it on on a level to where cuz even now you're still yeah, like when were you were shot that that day or sh that yeah, I, I was shot. I was shot. Like you see me in a video, I'm shot in both my in both my legs, and um and banger R. P. Banger, banger yeah, was banger was killed. And um, then and also then, you still face like you still got to do time, right? Yeah, I still got to do time. Other, other people were shot too. It was like a bunch of innocent people. Yeah, yeah. Like, I I'm, like even uh, one of our Wild and Out girls, uh, I believe Maddie was. She was at Maggie. That's crazy. Ma Maggie, yeah, Maggie. Yeah, Maggie, yeah. Chano stepped over a bleeding body, and she was with him. That's, so that was his girl. He left her. She, that's crazy. I think she was in Wild and Out season eight, I believe. Yeah, but so I mean, yeah, like, so, nuts. but it, it's it's crazy that you know it's an unfortunate scenario, and I want I want you to explain it yeah, yourself. But on a night where you know it was supposed to be a, a hip hop concert showing right. love to the cult culture i was going there to work yeah you know what i'm saying i was going there to be a guest so appearance so what went wrong what happened how did you go just like was it just it wasn't some on site stuff was so it so th this is what this is what it was like i said that person said that when they saw me they was going to shoot me boom 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 it's all shit that they played in court you know what yeah. i'm saying like these documented facts and um when i went there i just went there to be a guest appearance like i'm going there to work like literally, I don't be like people won't see me at a bunch of hip hop events hanging out and shit. Right. Like I, I go work, get my money, drop my music for my fans, do my hosting, my shows, and I like to be in my house. I like to live in luxury, fucking chilling with my kids, like watching snowfall. Like I like to do chill shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I go out there to work after having an event for the DJs, and then um, 
they lead us up. So like this is all the stuff that I couldn't talk about before, even when we did uh, past interviews and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we talked about you couldn't you couldn't tell this because it was in the middle yeah, of the case. So and I and I can't defend myself. So yeah. it was like I'm playing with both my hands behind my back. Yeah. So like it's a lot of narratives that was being pushed, but um just because that person has you know friends in the media and whatever whatever, but these are the facts. Like it's court documented facts. I'm going into Irving Plaza. I walk upstairs. I'm going into a, the first VIP room, which leads you to a second VIP room, which leads you down to the stage. I walk to the first VIP room. It's somebody from uh, Irving Plaza, one of the staff, walking us through. Um, I got banging in front of me, which is my, my people's, and then a couple of my other people's behind me. When we walk in the room, it's, it's, the room ain't even... It, the room is probably the size of two jail cells, just to... You know what I mean? Right. For, uh, uh, a small vicinity. Small. It's about 8,200 people in that room now. 8,200 people. We all in there. Um, so I can't just walk straight through. As soon as I walk in, it's a bunch of pictures, whatever. I'm saying, what's up to people? Shaking hands, kissing babies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like just showing love when I come through. Right. Anyway, um, so then we, we stop. They're like, yo, clear it out, clear it out. Yo, we coming through. Come on, clear it out. So now people are moving slowly or whatever. Now when we get to pass the door to the second phase, so if, if this is it's the door, the middle, and then another door that I got to go into to go downstairs to the stage. Once I get to the middle, I hear, what's popping, what's popping? I'm not paying no attention because, like I said, it's 80 to 100 people in there. They all yelling. You know what I'm saying? Right. So this person is saying, what's popping? I'm like, all right, whatever. Now when I hear bangers say, what's popping? In response, that's when I pay attention. Cause now this is my man, and I know his voice, and he's saying it back aggressively, like was popping. So that person obviously talking to us, him, him, which is us, we together. You feel me? So now I look over, and I see it's a uh, tag stone, rat stone. Now he's saying was popping, gun on his waist. You know what I'm saying? Hand on his waist. Was popping, was popping, like you know, letting us know. So. Banger turned around to me and um, he said, yo, I'm about to rock him because like where we from, not to be on no tough shit, but just where we from, where we built from, like we don't, whenever it's fight or flight, I'm going to always choose to fight. You feel me? Right. Like there's no place, like this ain't an avoidable situation. It ain't like this guy was all the way on the other side of the room. He's in front of the door that I got to go down into to go to work. You feel me? Right. So yelling was popping. Uh, brandishing a gun. So now Banger says, yo, I'm about to rock him. So I wink at him. I say, yo, do your thing. Like, low key, you know what I'm saying? But as I'm doing that, he turned back to me. I'm still looking over his shoulder at Tag Stone, Rat Stone. And um, now he looked like he about to raise a gun. So instead of me, like, yo, Banger, he about to shoot you or hiding behind him, I go punch him in the face. I go, to, I go punch him in the face with the right hand. And I reach for, the, for his gun. With my left hand, you know what I'm saying? Right. To get up out of his hand. Now everybody started moving around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got knocked to the side. And now banging and Taxon start wrestling for the gun. And then and then Taxon fires, boom, boom. He let off two shots. Banger get hit. I get up, get back on him, get back on Taxon, fighting for the gun. Um, it's like I said, it's a bunch of people in there. So now we fall to the floor. He slips up, turns around, boom, I get hit. Now he's trying to get up out the room. You know what I'm saying? When he's trying to get out the room, it's still crowded. You can't just leave the room. Now instead of going to hit him the first time and then grab the gun like I did, like I did previously, I say fuck that. Now I'm gonna grab the gun first and then I'm gonna grab him. You know what I'm saying? So I grabbed his the wrist, his wrist with the gun. I grabbed his wrist with my right hand, and I mean his wrist that had the gun in it. I pulled it this way and then I grabbed his collar and pulled him down to the floor. So now at this point, we we fighting like some movie shit, like all kind of, I'm trying not to get shot in the face and shit, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. And he got the gun over his head. I'm and you blind. already hit at this I'm point. I'm already hit. I'm already hit, but at that point, it's like, fuck the, it, what I'm going to do? The adrenaline is running, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die fighting. I'm not just going to be on the floor, like, oh, I'm hit, and let the person that shot me and shot my man get away. Like, fuck it, we all going to die in this bitch then. You feel me? So... Um, now we fighting for the gun and shit, and then, and then like, 
we wrestling, the gun goes around this way, and then he starts squeezing, bam, 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 squeezing those shots. So now I throw my hand behind the trigger to like stop the shots from firing, you know what I'm saying? We go, I'm talking about this shit is intense. I'm, I'm biting a nigga on his neck, he's biting my forearm type shit. So finally, then I get a little, I, I managed to get like more control of the gun to him. I still don't got full control of it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling a little weak from losing blood and shit, but whatever. Now I just start pistol whipping him. So he still got his hand on the top of the gun. And I'm like, bang, bang. I'm pulling it down, like cracking his skull with, with the shit. You know what I'm saying? Until I'm drawing blood, trying to get it off. And some people came in and somehow we got broken up and I just like pulled the gun. I pulled the gun away. So when I pull the strap away, I. I turn around real quick and I look to make sure that everybody I came in with is good because it was a lot of shots. Right. Banger got hit and I don't know who else got hit. Only person there is my man Block. I say, yo, Block, you good? He said, yeah. I said, come on, we out. We leave out the room. Now, this is the part that they showed on the media. Yeah. This is the part that made it look like Troy mm -hmm. Ave just came into a club recklessly and started shooting, which people didn't realize is I was coming out of a VIP room where I was attacked and I was shot. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now when I'm shooting is when I see him. I see Tagstone, Ratstone, and now I'm trying to boom him. I'm trying to kill him. You know what I'm saying? And he's right there as soon as I come out the room and shit. So, like, when people rap about all this shit, yo, we're going to slide for our homies and get back. Now, this is immediate get back. That's what I really did. I really want immediate get back right there. Like, I don't give a fuck if it's cameras. I'm shot. Fuck it. I might die. I'm not worried about, yo, there's cameras in here. Let's be hot. No, you just shot my man. I'm going to fucking kill you right now. You feel me? So that's what the people see. Now, mind you, he was with... Uh, so that's the video that's out there with you shooting Shoot. It. I'm shooting at him with his own gun that he just shot me with and killed my man with. Right. And that's the crazy part that nobody realizes. You feel me? Right. And, like, I don't even know if... He got past another gun because his man Aston over two times was in there. So you see him on the video when I come out backing up and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't give a fuck. You just shot my man. You just shot me. This is a me. This ain't no rap song. This is real life. This is fight or flight, and I'm fighting every time. So how, so, okay, so now you getting a chance to tell your side of the story and, and like you said, revealing stuff that most of the world didn't know. Right. How now, with those actually being the facts, do you have so many haters saying that you played this wrong or they try to put different jackets and stuff mm -hmm. on you, saying, like, you know, even in this court situation and all of that, like, it it sounds like, I mean, your side of the story, full self-defense. Absolutely. You did, see, because I was thinking, like, so you, the weapon you were shooting was the weapon you wrestled away that you had already been Wasn't shot with. my own gun. That's what I'm saying. Like, what am I? According to New York, you supposed to put the gun down. You ain't supposed to pursue somebody and shit. We. It's so not yeah. Like, so yeah. Why do? You, so why do you now? So why did you have to go to court? And now why do you still have to serve time? Well, initially, they locked me up. Like, immediately. Immediately in a hospital bed. You feel me? Right. Not even 12 hours after. So, um. I forget what the initial charges was. I guess it was firing, shooting, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I mean, firing a weapon in a public right. space. New York don't play about guns anyway. So yeah. it's just, just so, all of that. But even the fact that it was probably having to do with something about you, you know, firing a weapon in a in a public exactly. place. Exactly. And then so now, and I got, I had a bunch of uh, other guns in my, in my car. I got guns in my van. Now, I got guns in my van for fucking protection. Right. I'm... I'm get, I never been on no bum, grimy shit where I'm robbing people. Yo, you got something that I don't got. I want to rob you. Nah, I'm motivated by that. Yeah. I see you with something that you obtain. I think that's bum, bottom feeder, low vibration shit. Robbing for no reason. I mean, just there's no reason to rob. Right. You can ask somebody for a job and learn how to get it and hustle yourself. Right. But in rap, you know, we moving places and we got a lot of money, a lot of jewelry, picking up back ends, just different shit like that. You got haters like... At the end of the day, I got to get home right. to my kids. You feel me? So I'm not bringing guns in the club, especially where it's this thing called the hip-hop police that we got in New York. Yeah. And, you know, every artist should have a rapport with them. So my manager at the time called him and was like, 
yo, we gonna be at Irvin Plaza tonight. Like, you do that. You got gigs around the city or whatever, you let them know, yo, we gonna be here. And they're like, oh yeah, we gonna, we gonna be there too, we'll meet you. You guys good? Yeah, we good, all right, cool. Whatever. And they go do that. Wherever somebody's at, a hip hop artist come in town, whatever, they basically monitor hip hop shit. So cool. We tell the hip hop police we going there. It's gonna be a safe venue, a safe event. I'm not bringing guns in no venue that's supposed to be safe. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now we walking in. That was another narrative. People try to say we had guns and shit. Yeah, my guns was in the car in a stash box. There's no need. I'm going to work. I'm not going there for bullshit. I'm not going there for violence. I ain't going there for nothing else. So now when um <clears throat> after I get locked up and I go through everything, they kept me in jail. They wouldn't give me bail. They kept remanding me. So they kept remanding me for two months because they was uh trying to determine whether they were gonna charge me with the murder of my own friend. Oh wow. Which this which Ratstone did, you feel me? They trying to charge me with the murder of my own friend. And I'm sitting in jail holding it down like, you know what, fuck it. The homies that was there, they gonna take care of it. It's gonna play itself out like I would do for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they asked me like, hey, what happened? I'm like, man, listen, just get me out of jail. I don't know nothing about shit. Get me out of jail. Holding it down. This is why I say streets is a myth. And mind you, none of the homies that are supposed to be solid took care of nothing. It was a bunch of people in there, like, just nothing happened. You feel me? And now, mind you, I got these gun charges. I got four gun charges. I got two gun charges that was mine. Then I got, I'm charged with, uh, I'm charged with tax homes gun. And another charge for firing his gun. And I'm charged with attempted murder on him. So those are the actual charges that I have with the murder charge of my friend looming over my head. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So finally, uh, when um after two months they let me out on strict uh a strict bail package, half a million dollar bail with contingency. So that's not the cheap shit where you just pay ten percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like it's real money, I gotta put up real property. If I was on some bum shit, Spending every dollar I get, I would still be in fucking jail. Wow. Real shit. So I finally get out. I'm on ankle bracelet. I got I got curfew. I can't leave the house before uh, 9 a.m. And I got to be in by 9 p.m. I can't work. No clubs, no bars. I can't go in any establishment with more than 10 people. Like, really strict shit. I can't be at a stadium. I can't do a lot of shit that I basically can't make a living. You feel me? Right. And... At this point, now mind you, I'm going through shit where I gotta pay back a bunch of back ends for for um for deposits. And oh shit. right, right. Because you can't like, miss dates. You can't. You I gotta miss dates. But just being a real man, I don't. I always pride myself on being a real man. Like I said, I don't even lie on my enemies. You know what I'm saying? Like like a real man, you gonna have integrity. You gonna take care of your family. You gonna make sure you don't got your hand out. Like a real man is not how many people you could beat up or shoot or rob or kill. You know what I'm saying? Like, staying on your business, take care of everything by yourself and helping others, that's a real man. So I'm not going to give these promoters and club owners excuses. Yo, y'all see, I'm going through some shit. I ain't, I can't pay you back. Nah, we did straight business. You hired me for a job. I didn't hold up to my end of the bargain. Here's your money back. Even if I'm fucked up right now, even if I got 200000 in lawyer fees, uh, $500,000 uh, bail, you know what I'm saying? Like right. different shit. Fuck it. And I'm just coming up at this time. I'm not up yet. At all, I'm I'm still independent. I right. I sign no deal to no label, no nothing. Like every dollar that I get, I'm putting uh uh sixty percent of that into promotions to make more money. Right. And then I'm carrying people or whatever. So I'm not up yet, but I still said fuck it. I stood on that business. Like it got it got to such a low point. And mind you, none of the homies that was around the artists that I put on, nobody, like except for Block Block held it down. They didn't say yo yo you need help with Bell Ave. Yo, you need help with your lawyers. You know what I'm saying? Like, and thank God I bought my my first condo. I bought that shit cash. Like, thank God I did that. Or I would have been, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck that. I had no place to live or whatever. Like a bum. And that shit was like a a low for me. You feel me? Like, because ever since I started doing music, even when I was selling drugs, it was always a means to an end to try to get out the streets. Because I seen people do better. I'm not one of those people who I just come from the fucking poverty, stricken hood, and just fucked up, and I don't know that I don't have working parents and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know you can make more money than probably somebody out hand-in-hand, -hand and 
if you got two jobs. Yeah, yeah. You could really make more money. Facts. Real shit. You don't have, have to be in the streets. You don't got to be in the streets. If the goal is to get money, find out how to get money. Right. If your goal is to make 100000 200000 a year, half a million, go Google. Hey, Google, how can I make this much money a year? Right. You might have to get several jobs, but you can still do it. Right. So I hate that old time low. And um, now while I'm out, while I'm, while I'm out, I can't make no money. I can't do nothing. And now, like I said, I had all these gun charges. So, you know, when you coming out, when you got a bond, a brotherhood, of friends, and y'all coming from the streets and making something of yourself, you not resulting back to the bullshit unless it's necessary. But you also got certain understandings. Like, if fucking, if you ride in a car and you got three homies with you, you the fucking breadwinner. You the, you the head of the, the fucking the horse. You don't let that person go down. If somebody got a gun in the car, yo, listen, I ain't doing shit. I'll take the gun and you hold me down or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So now that was my understanding with, with my peoples. I ain't going to say their names. But now they start acting funny. I, I say, yo, listen, this is what we going to do. Fuck it. I'm going to take this attempted murder. I'm going to take this uh, uh on tax. So I'm going to take the attempted murder. I'm going to take his gun charge. I say, if I don't beat it, it's going to be something low that I, I know it. I got to pay lawyer, not legal aid. We going to spank this. Like, it's not going to be that bad. Y'all take the other two guns. You know what I'm saying? My lawyer didn't got Hovain off on guns before I paid for it. He didn't got him off. He didn't got me off. You know what I'm saying? Yo, here, I'm going to pay for y'all lawyer. Y'all take them other two guns. If you got to sit for a year, whatever, you don't got no priors, we going to be good. We gonna f we came up as a team, we made money as a team, we had great times as a team. So now when shit is bad, we need to go through the shit as a team. Right. So now I start seeing people that I thought was solid, start folding and making up excuses, and now being a little distance, not answering the phone, and start spreading narrative that yo I'm bugging and they can't talk to me and I'm using drugs. Like the fuck anybody know me? No, I don't use drugs. I'm the dealer, not the user. <laughs> right. The fuck. I barely smoke weed. Right. So just start spreading those things just to get out of what we all had agreed upon, which what we all knew, if shit hit the fan, that's what we going to do. Like, why is one person, Choi Av, taking fucking four gun charges when he got homies that's with him every day traveling? I'm paying for everything, food, shelter, every... I'm putting, I'm putting artists that is relatively unknown or just straight up unknown, I'm putting them on my biggest records. It's already a big record. The record is done. Hey, come on, put a verse on the end of that, because I want you to shine too, my nigga. Right. You feel me? Yeah. So, and, I mean, and, go ahead, go ahead. And for that, for that to happen, because, like, I don't know about, like, you or people watch. You ever been in a situation where somebody do some shit to you, and you be like, damn, why, the, why would they do that to me? I wouldn't do that to them. Right, right. That's a terrible feeling. You be like, I wouldn't do that person like that. Why they, the fuck? 